we have a lot of questions here in our chat box. First question, hospitals in other countries practice changing their peripheral IV catheter every 72 to 96 hours. Why does the Philippines does not observe that kind of practice? Should we wait until we see a sign of phlebitis or infiltration? That that uh, particular practice has already been, uh, you know, taken up uh, in a uh, practice guidelines on the management of IV catheter infections. There's really no uh, very good evidence that you know you re- you need to regularly replace the you know, uh, peripheral IV catheters. No? Uh, so it's really up to the uh, to the hospital. So how 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 they would like to implement this practice, but uh, it doesn't mean that you know if you keep the the peripheral line longer than seventy two hours, there would be an increased risk of infection. No, there's no such uh, very good evidence. However, uh, you know as, as a precaution, you know, I think the the best recommendation that I found was if you're going to replace the peripheral IV catheters, you should at least wait for 72 hours. Uh, Thank you, sir. In the States, they are strict with regular changing peripheral IV cath. Here in our country, as long as the site is still functional, we don't usually change it. Uh, I actually agree, sir, regarding this because on the um, 2021 uh, recent guidelines of uh, a society of critical care medicine they've mentioned regarding the three days uh, or the 72 hours of changing of IV catheters uh, but they've also also mentioned there that uh, there are studies that uh, we, we can extend and the mean they they uh, they've mentioned there is six days so it's really different from every hospital that we are in Another question, recommended po ba ang Tegaderm for change dressing post-operatively for uh, low section, cesarean section patients? I think um, the general Tegaderm. recommendation is uh, if for surgical site infections and even for central line catheters, uh, it would be better to use transparent dressings you know? because the purpose yes. of that is to, you should be able to catch signs of inflammation uh, early on, right? So that's basically the rationale why we want to use a transparent dressing. However, in, in, in some instances, um, or not some, but in a lot of instances, the patient may uh, be allergic to the uh, transparent dressing. So it's also to, okay to use uh, ghost dressings. Thank you, sir. Based on your experience, how long is ideal and safe duration on using different catheters to lessen risk of infection? If you are referring to central line catheters, no? uh, central line catheters, there's really no uh, what do you call this definite time period as to when you can uh, uh, keep it or change the central line catheters. No, but uh, obviously the central line catheters can be kept for a much, much longer period of time compared to the peripheral line. Uh, uh, you can keep them for months, no? uh, even years, uh, especially in cases of implantable uh, uh, catheters. Uh, the main indication for changing the central line catheters would be if it's uh, you know, busted, obstructed, if it's not working. Uh, if there's any signs of obvious signs of infection, uh, but uh, routinely changing on a regular period, uh, there's no really uh, there's no uh, recommend uh, not recommend it's not really recommended. In our practice in uh, post-operative care, uh, we usually have central lines and uh, pulmonary artery catheter, but as long as the patient's stable. Uh, we already uh, removed the uh, catheters, the IV line, the arterial line. I mean, the the central line on and the uh, the um, arterial line, and also the Foley catheter, especially yeah. if the patient's already uh, stable. Yeah. Yes. So that that falls under the recommendation. If it's not needed, then remove it. Yes, sir.
world moves in real time. So should our healthcare technology. With information needed, decisions to make, and experience to share. Every second counts. Live integrated tele-ultrasound enables real-time communication, remote collaboration, confidence, knowledge, and learning. The first ever integrated tele-ultrasound collaborative platform. Philips Lumify. Integrated Tele Ultrasound, powered by React's collaborative platform. Innovation and you, Philips. There is one question here. How long can we uh, use antibiotics? The duration of antibiotics is actually um, individualized. Uh, we have to consider the um, the type of infection that is um, assessed for the patient, the source of infection, um, whether, as mentioned earlier, source control have been done or meaning the, the source of infection has been adequately addressed or controlled. And you know, aside from basically the, the site of the infection also, I, or I mean the anatomic site of infection, um, and also the organism as the positive agent of the infection. So those, all of these um, um, are taken into consideration in deciding the duration of antibiotics. So as mentioned earlier, it, it could be um, up to seven days or longer. Um, it really um, depends. So which means that not all patients, for example, with pneumonia would require um, just seven days of antibiotic. So, so basically it's individualized depending on the assessment. Thank you, Doc. Uh, yes, Doc. Um, uh, just a follow-up question, Doc. No? Are there times that uh, you de-escalate the antibiotic earlier? Uh, say, for example, five days. And uh, what could be the, the parameters aside from, uh, from the vital signs or the clinical signs and symptoms of patient? Do so there is no um, actually parang like a strict set of criteria on the escalating the antibiotic. So we have to take into consideration clinical assessment of the patient, whether clinically the patient is improving, the laboratory as well as the diagnostics uh, or imaging um, may be used to guide depending on the um, initial assessment or the diagnosis of the patient. The procalcitonin um, may also be used as a guide, but it's not, um, meaning it's not always uh, required so it's not always used or it's not really required to be used to de-escalate and of course yung whether the patient is able to um, tolerate for example if we will de-escalate an oral if patient is able to tolerate the oral antibiotic so this these are the um, parameters which we take into consideration prior to the escalation and of course, um, whether the source of infection has been controlled already and um, um, yung, our cultures or yeah, our cultures are already um, available if, if it will help with the escalation. Thank you, Doc Addy. During implantation, uh, implant insertion, which is better to use the injection pad or band-aid after the insertion to cover the insertion site. What's important is actually you should be able to adequately cover the insertion site no? uh, and then in the immediate surrounding area. And it should be uh, you know, waterproof. No? Uh, should be able to able to prevent uh, any other particles from from uh, from entering you know, the, the, the insertion site. So I think that's the most, uh, those are the most important criteria. Not necessarily the brand. No? Thank you, sir.